Welcome to another episode of Hashmap Megabytes. This is Venkat and this video is recorded on Jan 2021. In this video, I'm going to walk you through and discuss about like, you know, Snowflake Cataloger, which is a simple opinionated approach for data cataloging and discovery in Snowflake. Typically in large enterprises, we have commercial systems such as Alation or Colibra, which gets data collected from metadata from various different databases and hosts up so that people can understand the various data. But this is not always the case for smaller enterprises. Options do exist for to use Go with open source engines such as Amundsen and whatnot, uh, which which does a wonderful job of getting a data catalog, building a data catalog, and it's being widely used in various different enterprises too. Apart from this, the way that this differs, the way that approach that we took in difference is that, let's say you have these databases that's sitting in your Snowflake account, and there are lots and lots of tables and schemas. You want to get some answers into who's using what, which of this being is used and what not, and you still don't have a data catalog or it's, you're in the journey of get, getting integrated Snowflake into your data catalog. In such scenario, how can you go about it? One method that we can found is that you can take a look at these Snowflake account usage query history and we have rich information from this view that we can determine how the tables are being used and whatnot. This is not something new. This has been implemented like in Uber, there has already been a project which you know, takes this information, which, uh, which have been done using this query parsing methodology. When you par parse out these queries, what you can find the, is that things like you know, what tables how are they related to an another table within which database with other databases how are they being used are they being used primarily only for insert statement and there is no select statements and such and whatnot you can decipher all of that just by introspecting or de-tokenizing the query history information one thing from you know, and if you take an example like this Uber approach, what they do is that they take out the query history out and they parse it out outside of the data source. They needed to do it across the entire uh, various different data sources across the entire uh, organization. But sometimes these query text that's contained over here do contain PII information. So it's not always, it's like, you know, not all the organizations are ready to take out such information and then do processing. So this is where this opinionated approach came into play, whereby we do the whole processing within Snowflake. The process involves, like, the all the informations are explained in this GitLab. The process simply involves running a bunch of scripts, which are purely Snowflake scripts. And if you wrote, uh, if you worked in Snowflake, you would know that none of these Java scripts would can make an external call outside. You can do all kind of programmatic processing inside. So all these by usage of Java scripts and stored procedures and using regex and whatnot, we can de-tokenize everything, and we can form such views like these. We can say that there's a view that builds. We can say that this table is related to this table and it has been used in multiple queries and the amount of queries is number 10. Of, of course, this is being a lab environment. You are not seeing a big count or whatnot. This is from our lab environment at HashMap. So you can also build out these queries as uh, the, uh, the more the tables are related to each other, they will be used in queries. So you know that 
if there is a, some kind of a direct relationship between these two tables and if you remove one of the tables or if it doesn't get loaded you can get to know what other table is getting affected you can also get informations as to like you know which table to be used by which are the users and of course which roles are being used that are actively using this query and whatnot you have we can build up views on top of that too apart from that we all can also derive information like given a table and a given a column we can get to know information like how um, how of which of the columns are being used and how often they are being used so you can get some information like if a table contains 50 columns you will get you will get to know like which are the most important column um, that's being used in your data warehouse and which other columns are not being used maybe you can get to know like if there is a column that contains PII information you will be able to know which query exactly are being used and how often it is being used you can get that tracking information similarly you'll also be able to find out given a table when was it last used and who used it this can give you by using this you can find out those set of tables and columns or schemas which are hardly being used by anybody and there is being data load happening but nobody is using them so you can find such kind of stale data tables and such now these are some of the views that we have built over here how you go about it is if you go into here into the snowflake cataloger inside the docs we have explained the installation process it the process simply involves just running a bunch of scripts which install certain functions and whatnot in specific order they have been explained in the documentation in the installation documentation and in also like the data processing of how these things can be done there's also a documentation on the design approaches which explains how things are being done and whatnot if you want to take it further you can take this information out which is just as you saw it's just meta information there is no PII information and all all the queries have been in deconstructed out and whatnot these are just metadata so you can take this information put it up into a static website and build up websites like these so now you know if you want to give it to a broader ex uh, broader audiences so you can uh, people can search for the tables they will be able to get such and such information about the table characteristics they also can get to know about the columns and the column usages and whatnot by which they can prioritize what's being used and whatnot the neighbors which are the set of tables that are closely in relations to this and the roles that is accessing accessing them thus this is just a simplistic approach of a data cataloging by which you can even build more and more views on top of it and in we have done it we can take some of these views and we can modify such open source product like I mentioned and build widgets within them also oh. thank you for watching Hashmap megabytes.